Hey everybody, welcome back to the Desmond Works channel and we are here with Lamb Chops Rides. Yep. And my There's engine. a partly assembled engine <laughs> behind me just here. Um, and following on from the first video where we started putting the bottom end back together, today we are going to be finishing off the assembly of the engine. So all the barrels and cylinders are going to go on. We'll finish assembling the clutch side of the engine because we were missing some parts on the clutch cover and then get all the clutch and everything in there as well. And then you'll be able to take the engine away. I really, really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it and uh, put this engine back together. Um, we did a little bit of rework then, didn't we? Because some of the clearances were slightly Yeah, wrong. so I, um, I misread on the manual the clearances for the gear shafts, so the clutch shaft and the output shaft. I read the clearance for the shift drum, which is 0.1 to 0.4, when really it should be 0.05 to 0.2. So they've now been adjusted. So the clutch output shaft is at 0.15 and the gearbox output shaft is at 0.1. So I had to change one of the big shims. Uh, okay. so, all you, so all you commenters saying, oh, wait, that's yeah. wrong, I'm sure that's <laughs> not right. It's sorted, don't worry. Yeah, all, all sorted. All, also, when we did the, the plaster gauge, we thought we had the wrong plaster gauge, but it's actually the, the Ducati service manual is wrong. It's got the wrong tolerance in yeah. there. So. No, so, a bit of so be careful if you're working on a hypermotard and you get the 1100 or 1100S manual, that is an ovality reading in there. And I've, I've spoken to a Ducati mechanic um, elsewhere and we've used the Monster 1100 engine clearance for yeah. the um, oil clearance for our big end bearings. So we, we, we thought we had an issue with the wrong, you know, where you saw it, but actually we were fine. But we didn't know that was wrong, so you don't expect to find a misprint like that in the, in the main service manual from Ducati, but there is, but we're sorted now. So in this episode, hopefully, we're going to get the engine fully together, fully sorted, for the project to resume back in my garage. So uh, we're just <laughs> going to do the oil clearances and then we're good to go. So uh, settle down, get yourself a cuppa. We've got ours. Conrods. So we've got to fit new bearings into the comrades. I won't give you any technical details, I'll leave that to Nelly. So we think we've got an A crank. Um, there's no markings on it, unfortunately. But there was, prior to me cleaning it when I did all the plugs, um, there was a faint remin like remnant of a yeah. painted A. So I'm hoping that that's what we've got. So we're going with blue, blue on the... But the, 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 the plastic Shells. aging confirms that it's... Yeah, it's that right will confirm guess, our yeah. clearance, so... Yeah. Which you do, it, you're, the reason you're doing the plastic age is to check that you've not got any significant wear yeah. that's going to affect your oil film gap anyway, so... Old shells. And again, in the other one, it's got slightly heavier wear, but again, no major scoring. And that's just really a coating on the yeah. outside. And that's obviously the, the whole point of that, because it's the softest material yeah. in this white, assembly. So, yeah, so white, that, so white, that metal, white metal yeah. coating on the bearings goes first. Then you get through to the bronze. If you're unlucky enough to go through the bronze, it will get then to the steel and then you'll seize. Just for those of you that build these every now and then, you have a little cutout on most comrods. And there's a little locating point on your shell bearing so just make sure that that's pushed in and then you want to make sure it's nice and flush so like so right so this is plastic gauge it's like literally little bits of uh, gauged plasticine that will expand at a certain rate when it's compressed so there's three different types green red and blue um, now, the manual does say to use green, but when I looked at the range that they, they are asking for, that after I spoke to the Ducati mechanic, that would be red right, okay. in, in the ones that I use. Ah, I see. Right, so basically what I want to do is I want to cut a little piece off, which is roughly the width of the shell. So if you sort of look at that, I'm roughly going to be the width of the shell. I need two bits because I need one for each. I'm just going to put a small... Of oil. This is just so that the plastic gauge comes off yeah. easily after we've done it. 
So first bit will go in there. And make sure that you're marrying up number to number. Down. Now I'm using the old bolts at the moment, but when we put it back together properly, I'll be using the new ones. Before them, I guess you taught them right down as well, do you? These only for for the check. They only need to go to 50 newton meters, okay. so they don't need to go to the full torque setting. Right, um, and that's as per the manual. I've just put that roughly into place. I'm going to torque that once I've got the other one on. Oh, see, so you don't want to mess the plastic edge up yeah. where it's sat against the surfaces. Yeah. yeah okay, I know I can lean it against. There we go. Ducati special tool comes into use. Yeah, Ducati special <laughs> twatting stick. Where's the other one, the chisel? <laughs> <laughs> no, chisels are for Hondas, aren't they? <laughs> so that is, that's Bob on. So that's, that's Bob on, that definitely. One. Now, looking at the way that sat, I might have just shifted that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll do that one again. You've got to make sure you get the plaster gauge off of the bearing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But be really gentle. You don't need to apply much force to get rid of it because you don't want to score the surface at all. Yeah. So just nice and gently rub it off. And that was the reason behind putting a little bit of oil in there first yeah, to so make it easy so to it come off. off easy. If you, you can do plaster gauge dry, but it's advisable not to. Right, just for that reason. Yeah. And the reason I'm doing this again is because it didn't have a uniform size. Yeah. So I think I moved it while we were talking it down. I've got the best job out of, the, yeah. uh, out of this, drinking the tea. Right, it's nice and flat there this time. Yeah. So I did definitely squish it and move it last time. So, yeah, but so we're right at the bottom of the range that I was given. So we are at the tightest clearance, but okay. that's good news. So we're using blue, blue bearings. Right, good. That's what, that's what I that's what we got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we, we so. We're using them either way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then crossing your fingers at first start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is uh, build oil. Okay. Um, there's a bit of division in builders as to using this stuff. So some people like putting a really thick grade, just mineral oil in the build, okay, yeah. um, which does the same as this. This is just a really thick lubricant um, that's washable with your standard engine oil. Okay, yeah. But what it does, it means those first few cranks where you might not have oil pressure yeah, because yeah. the engine's totally, totally. dry, yeah. it will protect everything. Protect it. Yeah. More importantly, you're, with your big Take ends, those big end bearings. you definitely want them not to touch at your first start. Yeah. So we're going to have to tighten to 35 Newton meters, yeah. then back off by 360, so a full revolution off after two seconds, assuming that's just to settle the bolt. And then we're going to do 20 Newton meters, 35 Newton meters, and then uh, a 30 degree final tighten, and it shouldn't really be any more than 70.5 once it's been tightened up. Gee, it's quite a lot then, you're talking quite a lot of... Uh, it's a sort of small little bolt, isn't it? Yeah. Like I say, it does stretch, that's why you have to reuse the stretch, bolt, because yeah, it stretches yeah, the bolt. Yeah, yeah, So, what I'm going to do first is tighten to 35 newton meters. They call this a snug torque. Stop for two seconds and... One, two... One, two, and then I'm going to have to undo them 360 degrees. That one. I'm going to have to do that 180 because the piston's going to yeah. get in the way. So that's 360. 360. Let's do it the same on the other one. I mean, that loosens it right off, which yeah. is interesting. Now we need to do to 20 newton meters. 20, 20 then 35, 35. What you got to do now, 75? Yeah, 70.5, 70.5. 70.5. <laughs> like the point five's gonna make a... I, I, 
I don't think I've ever seen a um, a standard graduated one like this that has yeah. a point five. So it's saying that we've got to tighten to 70.5, but the angle has to be greater than 30 degrees. So what I'll be doing is I'll be putting this on, zero in it, then tightening to the 70, and as long as it goes sort of past that 30 degrees, we're yeah. good. If not, we'll have to apply a bit of extra. Right, so that's bang on 30. Ah, uh, okay. So we're good on that one. That one went to about 50 degrees. And that's about 55 degrees, that's interesting. And they both nice and loose. Fully built, torqued down, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not doing it. <laughs> So what we've got to do now is just get all of the case ready to close up. So we've correctly preloaded the crank, which we did earlier in the video yeah. or in the previous video, previous depending video. on how you're watching this. Yeah. Um, we've shimmed the gear cluster. We've shimmed the drum. So sorry, I should say preloaded 0.3 millimeters of yeah. preload. We've got 0.15 of axial float on this shaft. We've got 0.12 axial float on this shaft, and we've got 0.25 axial movement on the gear selector drum. Right. We've Oof. then built up our crank, and in a second we're going to take the pistons off to make it easier to put it all together. And what we've got to do is also now put in the intermediate timing drive shaft and we've got to put the selector pulls in yeah, for okay, the, to, um, yeah, the gears. Gearbox. Otherwise, you won't be able to select any gears. <laughs> okay, well, that'd be nice to have some gears as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, well, a well and truly a, f a, full, a box full of false neutrals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turns now, where it was oh, locked okay. last time. That's good. More strawberry sauce. In the strawberry sauce. There we go, that's that one out. <laughs> mm, good luck finding that. No, I found it. Oh, you got it already? Yeah, good. That's the horizontal one, so it's in the middle, and this is the vertical in the middle. Lovely. Which is why we wanted to make sure that they were done correctly. And that's it for the stuff in the middle then, is it? Yeah. That's all the, okay. That's everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be um, using Freebond or Ducati sealant, they sometimes call it, it's the same stuff. Yeah. Um, Albeit that when you get it officially from Ducati, it says Ducati there. I think, yeah, I so, think I've got some Ducati bonds at yeah. home. Anyway. It's an extra 20 <laughs> quid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can see from the mapping, so we need to go all the way around the case on both sides of, both sides of where the swing arm shaft goes through, up round to the head. Yeah. We then have to do the V at the top here, yeah. and then we've got to do the strainer housing seal as okay. well. Anywhere there's a bolt hole, you have to go round the bolt hole because otherwise you introduce a path for the oil to be escaping through. Okay, so we will go round the bolt oh, holes. You need as little as you can get away yeah. with, basically. Oh, not <laughs> Gooping straight away. It's getting excited. So you don't, that's really all you need. It's yeah. just like a nice little bit little. You see these factory robots in and they just go Whoa. Yeah, the robots do it really quick. Yeah. I am a robot. <laughs> <laughs> not. So it's not not pretty, but that's basically what you're after. Just a little film. Yeah. That'll just that'll be compressed in a second when we put the engine together. Don't need don't need a robot to do it, mate. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now we've got to drop the cases on. Yeah. 
I don't mind as long as it doesn't touch down at all. Yeah, well, that's because you've got the got the glute now as well, haven't you? So yeah. you don't. I so see you don't want to touch and lift, do you? Oh, oh look at that. That there was easy, wasn't it? There we go. Have faith, John. Straight Have faith. on. Straight <laughs> on. <laughs> look at that. Together at last. Two years that's been apart. Yeah. There we go. That's it. Well together. Cases together. So um, gunk to wipe off from there. Let's wipe the gunk off because he's got nice pretty cases. <laughs> and we want to leave them like that. The problem is, is your cases are so dark. Yeah. That it shows it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas oh, when, I, when, silver, I, it, when yeah. I powder coated mine because they were silver, I could leave any excess on it. Yeah. You couldn't notice it really. Yeah. And you see that when I'm wheeling in there, it's not quite so important. <laughs> <laughs> well, just most of the time, to be fair. <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, look at that. Bottom end. All bolted. Bolted on. I guess that's the that's the hard work. Not only hard work, but the the stressful work done. I guess is it. There's stuff which it's is the more challenging challenging bit. Yeah. There's a lot of throwing on now. Yeah. The only other challenge of it is timing. Cases officially together, all bolts in. Yeah. We've got a massive pile of. We're getting there. Bits. We're, we're now we're now officially starting to work our way through them. Doesn't seem to have gone there down is. much, does it? <laughs> yeah, we'll go down quickly now because all the all the sills and that will start going yeah. in. That'll go in there like so. First off, we're going to stick in the starter wheel. Yeah. So just, but this goes here, and there's a little dowel yeah. that supports that, a shaft dowel. This is actually quite a large wheel, and you'll notice in the casings there's yeah. a cutout for it. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you have to line this up in the cutout oh, first, first, and then put the dowel through. Then put the dowel through, and then we've got a washer that sits on top of there. So that's like your space washer. Got to put a little bit of Loctite on there in a second, but I'm just going to check it turns down through its hole first before we yeah. do that. Little glob on there. Widen it in. Spread it in so it's actually in the threads. 10 newton meters. It's done. So it is a... And we're in. Now there's a special tool for us to set that up. I found it. Now the other bit that you need to do is you need to look at where your arm sits in relation. So we've not loosened this lock nut, but if you've, if you've taken the adjustment lock nut apart, your gear selector arm needs to be in the middle of the bracket okay. for movement. So there's limit stops on here to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then you've got two bolts to put in. So these got serrated washers on them, locking washers as well. A little bit of goop on this one because it's got goop on it. Ooh. Because before I tighten it down, I need to make sure that we're actually in the neutral position. There's a punch mark, punch mark. We've got to line these up once I get the um, shaft roughly in the right place in terms of the key. There. So that's that lined up. So that's timed. Yeah. So that's bottom end timing, crank timing. Yeah. Just start a sprag. The sprag in here is really nice. What you check for is flat surfaces on these little rollers. Okay. These are the bits. That, like I can tell it's in good because if it wasn't in good condition, there'd be little landmarks all the way around okay. where it just bites, bites, yeah, bites, yeah, yeah. bites. Yeah. But you can see this is a low mileage engine. Like yeah. Really. Yeah, when you, when you get a bike that doesn't start Ducati wise, you know, just spins and spins or clunks and spins, clunks and spins. Usually it's this. Okay. Uh, generator rotor nut, 270 Newton meters. 
Yeah, so we're going to have some fun doing this one up in a second. So this is a flywheel locking tool. So it's saying three stripes on the crank. Yeah. And one stripe on the nut. Don't start the bike for three hours after doing that. I think I'm going to be right. <laughs> <laughs> How strong are you feeling? <laughs> I get out my once in a blue moon torque wrench. Yeah. 270 newton meters. Okay, this goes up quickly, this one, 270. Bang on. So you just need to try and brace it. I'll put in some force as well. Ready? Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that takes it out, yeah. At least the other side's only like 180 or something like that. Wouldn't the fancy doing it on my own? Uh, yeah. No. It's holding it, isn't it? Holding yeah, it's holding it. It's holding it. In, in the bike, it's a relatively oh, yeah, easy yeah. job, yeah. Because um, obviously you've got the bike to, to hold it in place. Built this side of the engine up. Just flip it over and that's the other side to do. Yeah, that. do the other side. Um, then get it on its side and we'll and do the cases. The cases and then I onto, onto the top tank, ends. Top ends. Yeah. Ooh. So we're onto this side now. Put these on. Primary gear now. A little bit of oil. <laughs> this, is, this is the one that didn't want to come off, wasn't it? Yeah. So this is, this is on there as well, this one, isn't it? Bolt-wise, when you tighten this down. Is it... Yeah. Lock. Right, next thing we need to do is just, I'm not talking that down till we've got the oil pump in place. Just a little bit of silicon grease just hold those in place. Yeah. So they don't, because these are the last things you want to shift. Yeah. Last thing you want is these shifting and your oil pressure going nowhere. <laughs> nowhere fast. So it locates on two dowels. Ah, okay. So you just got to just tap it home on. There we go. And then, like a lot of oddities in the uh, engine, it's got um, two different size bolts that are uses two M8s and one M6. Oh, really? So you've got M8 up here, M8 in there, M6 down there. Only Ducati know why. Only Ducati know why. Weight saving. So generator cover. So we've got all the flour and everything on. Now we're going to uh, get the generator cover all buttoned up and on. But heat re Before we do that, we need to have a swig of this tea. <laughs> it's been a long old day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A long old day of misadventures. Nice brew. That's the oh, tone change. Go, yeah. So it clips in. Surgical skill of a drunk <laughs> brain surgeon. There we go. Bonding done. Top tip now. Top tip. Finger off your gloves. Just so, so it's damaging your seal as you as you push yeah. the casing on. I'll just do that. Otherwise you end up weeping. Yeah. We get horrible weepy. Yeah, weepies. Nice, 
they do look lovely and they're wire locked so you could go yeah. you could go to all the hassle of wire locking your cases all the way around <laughs> fancy, for it? no reason at all <laughs> other than to go i've got wire locked wire cases locked. <laughs> it's a race bike you know <laughs> why would you wire lock your cases nah, well wouldn't you like to know <laughs> got side on one side done finally Lovely. Just doing uh, valve clearances on Chopsy's engine. Um, you can see I, I built up the head just to check that everything fitted and I had everything. All I've just got to do is just remove all these covers. Um, the cam wheel is loose because I've put this cover in here. So I just need to get everything off so that I can do a quick check and then make any adjustments that are necessary. I have already done the vertical head so we had to make some small adjustments but that's now all in spec 0 0.1 and 0 0.05 on everything so i'm just gonna do the horizontal head now small head bolt there so just rather than using the impact gun I thought it best to use a ratchet to get that out okay covers off let's just do some uh, checks So this one's definitely unloaded. Point one fits. Point one, tight point one five. That point one five. And that's the exhaust opener. Load up the exhaust cam. And we've got point two works. Pull these two together, 0.25. No. Right, 0.2. All right, fully unloaded that one. Again, 0.1. We've got snug point one. Load it. Point one five. Point two doesn't go in. So only adjustment I'm gonna to have to make is on the exhaust opener. So let me get the shim out and we'll just measure that up. Now on the two valves, you need to just move the arm across. Oh, a little bit of uh, moving the cams around, move it to the side, take it off. Now the hyper motards are seven mil valve spindles, same as the Desmo Quattros, which is lucky for me because I've got a fair few of those shims. Let's measure this one up. We got 3.05. So I haven't entered the 3.05 in, it's telling me I want a 3.1 shim. So over to the magic box of shims. 3.1s, let's grab a few out because they tend to vary slightly in size. All right, let's see if we can find one out of these. With 3.05 side. Mm. 
There's a 3.12, a little bit too tight. 3.12 as well. Oh, 3.14. 3.13. Let's grab some more. 3.1. Bang on. Put that back on the valve. Make sure that's nicely on. Move our arm back across. Let's check valve clearances again. So just make sure the cam is definitely off. It's 0.1. Can't get 0.15 in there now. If I load it, get 0.15 in. Just check it's not 0.2. No. Job's good and 0.1 and 0.015. So if I now just update my final measurements, got 0.1 from there, I had a 0.15 from there, and then my newly adjusted is 0.1, 0.15, all in spec. Valve check done with a one one adjustment on the horizontal head. I had to make uh, three adjustments on the vertical. All good. Let's quickly put the covers back on. Okay, that head's back together. All, um, oh, what do we need to do? Just quickly uh, push the cam wheel back on. Washer. And then brand new lock nut. Always use a new one of these when you're putting these bikes back together because the last thing you want is your pulley wheel to back off. I'm going to leave this loose for now because it's easier to torque down when it's on the engine because I get more substance grip. And you'll notice I didn't torque the cover bolts. That's because Lamb Chops gave me some titanium bolts to put in, but the hex heads, not cap heads, so I can't fit them. But um, I'm sure he'll want to replace these scabby, rusty bolts that he had from his original ones once he gets a chance so I've just left them loose for now and just will advise him on that okay so that's the heads all together and ready to go on the engine valve clearance check has done some small adjustments all of the covers are on so let me put that to one side and we shall be sticking that on in the next video okay just gonna check diameter of the cylinders and then check for ovality as well. So according to the manual, there's a 0 0.03 millimetre taper service limit. So that's the piston going up or down and it sort of closing in and out as it goes down. And then the ovality is checking the concentricity of the piston, sorry, the cylinder itself. So in other words, how round it is. And again, we've got a 0 0.03 limit. So I'm going to take measurement there, measurement there, um, and just double check it. Now, frustratingly, I've got two classes of um, 
cylinder's got an A, and uh, I don't know if you can make this out, but a B on this. So there's two slightly different sizes. So this is a 98, and I've got a permissible wear limit of 0 0.01 millimeters, which is quite tight. And this is a B, which is 98.01 with a 0 0.01 wear limit, so I'd go to 0 0.02. So I've set 98 on my good old fashioned solid vernier. I'm more comfortable with setting this one for my default limits because it's a uh, slightly better and I've configured my yeah, I can't let's see if I can get it all in I've configured my bore checking uh, micrometer which is so this gubbins at the bottom has been set up to read 98 so for the check in this one uh, hence you can't see it very well because it's not very well illuminated but um, that that will change to zero when I put it in hopefully or 0 0.01 at the worst and then I'll just do some checks on that so let me do that okay so on this cylinder I am nice and round so it's 0 0.01 here and it's 0 0.01 here in terms of deflection on the gauge um, there is a 0 0.01 taper though so I'm banging spec on the measurement in the midpoint at 0 0.01 not 98.01 I should say uh, but right at the top so just as you know where you see your wear wear marks so right at the top of the stroke I'm at 98.02 so technically it's it's outside the wear limit but it's sorry it's outside the cylinder specification for new but in terms of the service limit I can go 0 0.03 up here and I'm at 0 0.01 where so that cylinder's good right I just need to adjust my equipment here so that I can get it set up for the B1 which is 98.01 and that's set up at the moment for 98 so let me just make that adjustment So what I'm doing when I'm setting up that measurement is I'm just making sure that I only have a positive or I have a zero or a negative number. The negative number meaning that the uh, gauge is opening up. So if I just quickly show you that, just like that. Okay, so I've set it to give me a perfect zero and the bit where I wobble it backwards and forwards in the micrometer is to find a zero and make sure I'm getting no positive reading so it should be a perfect zero or negatives to ensure that this is set up to read correctly. On with this cylinder. Okay, and that barrel there has got next to no wear in it at all. It's like not showing any taper at all and it's not showing any ovality at all in it. It's Bob on the service specification, so 98.01 at there and the bottom, there and there. So no taper, no ovality. Okay, next piece I need to do is set up the rings hence why the piston's already in, that's just so I've got something to stop it against. So I'm going to bring these up to the midpoint and then what I will do for each set of rings is set them up to their clearances. Okay, for those of you that uh, want to know, so when we set the piston ring head gaps up, we are looking for somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4 on the top ring and the second ring. Uh, with a wear limit of 0.8 but we've got brand new ones so I'm hoping not to get anywhere near there and then the oil, oil scraper ring nominal reading should be 0.3 to 0.6 and again a wear limit of 0.1 but again new so we shouldn't see that what I'm going to be doing is putting the piston in to quite close to its top end of stroke to make sure that the piston rings are perfectly square 
when they go in and then I move it down, take the measurement. So let's do that. So we'll just get piston up. We'll ensure that the piston rings are in the swept area. It's important that once I put these in that we don't mess them up. So I'm just going to make sure that we mark that these will be the vertical ones. First and second ring, oil scraper rings with the central element. We don't need to measure that, but we need to measure these. So I'm going to take the ring, Placed it against the top of the piston. Push the piston down now out of the way. This is perfectly square in here. And don't know if you can see it in the light, but there's a little gap just here. And that's what I'm gonna measure. So let me grab my feeler gauges. Okay, it's hopefully, because they're new, we'll go with the smallest measurement first, 0.2. And that's nicely in there. A bit loose, so I'll just get point three. Ah, point three is point three is snug, and you can see it's moved. So I'm probably at about point two five or somewhere around there. Um, Yeah, 0.25. So we're right at the lower end of the spec for that one. Let's just take that one out. Push the piston back up. Don't worry, I did oil the barrel lightly before I put this in there. Next one. Again, nicely seated, push the piston away. And same again, we'll just measure that gap. So starting with the smallest measurement, 0.2. Clear. Point three, it's clear. Point four, there's a very slight rub on point four. So we are just at the top end of the service limit for a, a ring. So let's take that one out. Push the piston back up. Right, I'm going to do one one part of the oil ring at a time because there's on the oil control ring you've got two two metal parts that we need to measure. So let's do this first one. It's a lot more flimsy as well. This it's a bit trickier to measure. So make sure again it's seated. Now on this one it's 0.3 to 0.6, so let me get my 0.3. Point three. So 0.3, let's push the piston away. No. Let's go to point four. Sorry, it's so flimsy you have to just hold it 
steady if you can when you're checking it. Oh, have I got two? No, it's just one. Okay. No, it's not 0.4. Get 0.5. The actual 0.5, not with another one stuck by it. It's just right. I can't get the 0.5 into that gap. Um, each time I try and push it, it's just right. So we're somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5, which is perfectly within the service limit. Uh, sorry, the nominal limit. Push the piston back up and do the final oil control ring. So again, perfectly flat. Just going to go straight for 0.4 based on the initial ring as well. Oh, actually 0.4 is tight. Let's go to 0.3. The point three is loose. Okay, so we're somewhere between point three and point four on the second oil control ring. So we're good. Let's just put them all back together and stick them in their bag. And that's ready for me to swap over on the piston. Okay, I'm just going to repeat the same task on the horizontal cylinder but I'm not going to film it because it's an identical process so let me get on and do that. So what we have done while you've been away Nelly's just done some little bit of prep work haven't you we, we've tightened on the uh, yeah all what's it tightened called? What's it called? I said, don't forget to tighten that in the primary comments. primary drive gear nut so that's done to uh, off the top of my head 170 newton meters might be yeah, 190 well, that's another biggie check it if you're doing it yourself um, and then Whilst you've been away hiding down south, I've also um, done all the valve clearances Ooh, on the heads, so they're all sorted. And these are the big LR performance heads, so these yes, have been yeah, ported, so ported and polished. Polished, all the inlet's um, been done matched as well, isn't it? On the uh... exhaust has been tidied up, yeah. and if we can see light wise, we've got matched. Matched inlets in nicely ported all the way down. Yeah, so this is big LR performance in the Netherlands. Yeah. Twan sorted this, you know, again, this has been, this is old news, he's been knocking around for years now. Yeah. So finally, they're going to go on the engine and get some use. So they are indeed. But for those that are asking, oh, I can't wait to see the Desmo head assembly. Unfortunately, Twan's done all that. Yeah. So the, the heads are already <laughs> off camera, so the heads are already assembled. So you're not going to see any of the Desmo. Uh, Gubbins. And right. Sorry about that. So a bit of sealant needs to go on. So we're going to chuck, before we put the casings on, we're going to chuck on the, uh, do the big stuff. We're going to put the cylinders and heads on. Going to do the timely stuff. More, more gloop. More gloop, yeah. That's our gloopy gloop on that side. I think what we be careful is the oil way on this as well. Isn't yeah. It? So you've got, this is a, an oil feed that goes up through the heads to supply your oil to your camshafts to make sure that they're lubricated and it's matched just in here. There's a little seal, make sure that that's in place. That is a Twan special. That's a big LR performance yeah. upgrade. You don't normally get No, that. you don't normally get yeah. And you'll see that on the on the horizontal head. We don't, we don't have this. It's just a yeah. straight fit and you have to make sure you've got enough gloop in there. So now the pistons being a balanced assembly are all matched. So we've got a nice yellow mark to know that this is the vertical that we need to get on there. Yep. So we're just going to do that. I've pushed out my piston pin so we can just... So you've got the new rings and everything on there already. Yeah, new rings are in. They were all gapped off camera. Here comes the fun, trying to get it perfectly lined up so we can push the piston pin through. Or gudgeon pin, as some people like to call it. There we go. We are in. Right, new, new clips. So a clip needs to go in, so I'm going to spin it round to the side, I need to do it. So we've got to get it into there. Bitter experience has told me. 
<laughs> you don't want to be losing that in there, yeah. though, do you? It's not the time for thing, anything else to be going in the bottom of that engine. These things either go in first time or bounce all over the place. But we are using new ones. That one that shot across the garage floor yeah, last time. Yeah. Don't worry, it's been replaced. So there's our old ones. So always, you know, these cost like 50 pence each yeah, or something. Don't nice. scrimp on them. Just always put a brand new one in. So we've got some nice... Nice new shiny Ducati ones. Oh, damn, it's just popped again, isn't it? Oh no, it's in. It's, it's in. in. So we seal basically both sides. Doesn't okay. need a massive amount because you've got the gasket yeah. as well. And I think this, this is the idea of that little O ring on the oil feet. It doesn't get goop in it and restrict yeah. your flare of oil to your head. All right, so we just now push this down. It's a one fit. Let's hope this fits. There we go. Right. Oh, that's the vertical head almost mm. on. So we just need to confirm the tightening torques. So it's a three stages normally. Oh, is it? Okay. Which, like, Typically, I cover the first stage just by hand by doing this, nipping yeah. up. A bit of advice with tools like these. If you do it straight on, you're multiplying the torque and you'd have to factor in for that. If you do it at a right angle, you can use the torque setting as it's on your wrench. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So get it at a right angle. Yeah. Drop it on. And then typical head bit, do it as a cross pattern. So yeah. I'll just get this head spun around so I can do that easily. Right, so on there so we're just going 15 newton meters on the original one like i said as you see it's pretty much my hand has done yeah, it up to 15 even, yeah. newton meters it's not a great deal of torque 15 newton meters no yeah okay then second stage is 25 there we go and then last one 40. There we hey, go. She's on. She is on. Ta-da! Ta -da. Happy New Year. <laughs> We're still at it. Happy New Year. Well, as we had a slight delay. We're like uh, two weeks after we were last here. Two yeah. and a half weeks, something like that. We've had Christmas in between and New Year. We basically got held up because we were missing <laughs> this bat. little this little dowel, which is an all field feed dowel that sits in the block just there. Um, now, sometimes it comes off on the barrels and sometimes it's left yeah. in the cases. We didn't realise we were missing it until just as we were putting it together, it wasn't in either. <laughs> so we've had more, more delay. So, you know, these, as because I, I lost my cylinder, my barrels, and these are not the barrels which were on the bike, that's why it wasn't on the parks. It must have been on the barrels which were lost and we just didn't know it. We didn't have it, did we? So, yeah. so today, this is all going to be one video, but we, will, we are taking this engine home today. <laughs> I don't care if it's not finished, it is going home It'll be today. finished. <laughs> It'll be finished. We want no more delay, so uh, let's resume. I've got to thank Twan, by the way, for sending us that little... Uh, little dowel. Because it's been Christmas, it was like 10th of yeah. January until he would process Before the order Before we could even get an order in, yeah. a 75p dowel. So I posted <laughs> something on Instagram and Twan saw it for Big Enough Performance and said, do you want me to just chuck one in the post for you? And I said, yes, please, mate. That would be a star. Gently tap that in. Sit it home properly. There we go. Oh, there it is. Sorted. Delays because of a silly little thing. And someone said, oh, if you had a lathe, you could make your own. Well, yeah, you could. It's not very helpful, is it? We haven't got a lathe. Yeah, I haven't got a lathe. <laughs> what, what do you recommend? Because I'm going to have because it's got new rings and stuff, it's going to need a little bit of running in, isn't it? Do, 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 what, what sort of oil should I use for that? Sort of a mineral oil for a run in? or Semi-synthetic will do you for the sort semi, of... Yeah, for a... The first sort of... So, I'd advise sort of riding it like a new bike yeah. for the first sort of 600 yeah, miles yeah, give it a proper, up and down the revs yeah. and everything. Don't linger too Don't long at a consistent much, speed, yeah. you know, and, um, and then drop it. Look for any sort of major metallic debris. You'll, you'll get a little bit because yeah. they do produce debris. Any, you know, any engine has wearing components that you're just looking for excessive debris. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you can go straight to a fully synthetic okay. oil and then just 
back to doing good regular oil changes. Yeah. Do you think it's worth sort of starting it, statically warming it up and then dropping the oil because it's had the, all the blasting done to it? I know it's an extra oil change. Yeah, yeah. Just it's, in case um, there's any media lurking. And because it's been sat for a long time as well, I suppose. It's right? worth, worth doing a, a, yeah, get some cheap. Just to sacrifice. Cheap 1040 yeah. mineral oil from like Alfred's or something. Yeah, just to do that with. Do a quick start, drop it. Yeah, and that yeah. might take anything. But, you know, bear in mind we've, every stage we've gone through, it's been cleaned. So you yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't get much, but you're right. The fact that it's been blasted, it give you a certain comfort factor yeah, that you're not going to be passing, passing anything else through. So we've got two gaskets to go in. Yep. As we do the vertical, so you've got the cylinder base gasket, which is just your spacer that sets up squish. And then we've got the actual head gasket that will go between the head and the barrel. You've got to be careful now. When you put in the piston all the way out so that you can get it in to the engine, this, this, you need to expose these landings on either side so you can get the gudgeon pin out whichever okay. way we've got to do it. So we've got to do it that way. So you can see I've got, I've got to come down a little bit further. But the oil control ring, there's a little bit ahead there. The oil control ring is not very far up the piston. So it's very right. easy to Just, expose it. Right, okay. And be careful because then if you're forcing it back up, you could snap it, it as you're going yeah, up. Yeah. So you just got to be really careful so that you just quite tight just to work with sort yeah of so like I tend to do that get it exposed and then push it back in so it's not showing anywhere yeah. we'll put some goop on that in a second once we've got the um yeah so you can just see that's our oil yeah, feed dowel in there the so you're going to sort of fit it and then glue glue the yeah and then glue it once I've got it down the fun bit yeah, it's got that one first time. So new, new piston, gudgeon pin clip in. I'm just, I'm just going to check that that seat yeah. properly now. I'm sure that before we goop it. I'm sure that oil feed pin's the right size and all of that. We're looking good. We're looking good. Excellent. So, I'll just bring that up to a... That gives us plenty of space. Yep. Pull that back, out of the way. All right. Factory glooper in there again. Yeah. Right, let me get I'm some stuff. I'm still, I'm still dubious, but it's ever gonna work again. <laughs> it will work, it will work. <laughs> I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this now, if it doesn't, it's not the engine. <laughs> Yeah, that, that first time you go to press that start button, it's going to be yeah, yeah. Be interested. Like the first, the best bit to do as well, when you first put it in and you want to do the first start, take your plugs out and everything. Yeah, yeah. Turn, turn it, it over, over a few times on yeah, the starter, exactly. just so just so you know that the starter circuit works properly. Because if you've got a labouring starter, uh, okay. it's unlikely to be the engine. It might be that your battery's not good yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and you yeah. don't want to waste time trying to start a bike where there's just not enough bike juice yeah, yeah. from the battery. So they're so, very slow to turn over, aren't they? They're like, yeah. That's your oil drain just there, those two big uh, right. grooves. A tricky on this side, isn't it? So we'll take that cover now. Definitely top in there, yes, we're in the right way. Squish that down. And then just a bit more on the top. On the top. A little bit around there. Okay. There it goes. And we've just test fitted that, so it should, yep, yeah, there it is. Thought it was going to be awkward then for a second, but. <laughs> We wouldn't do that to us. <laughs> yeah, that's the oil drain hole. Just making sure that the cylinder matched the head then. Well, it's possible it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if anything with this now. <laughs> yeah. So, we are in. Is it going? Oh, there we go. Oh, look. Almost looks like an engine now, doesn't it? Drink your tea before it gets cold, mate. Yeah. Because it's tea. getting cold very quick. <laughs> <laughs> Time for tea. <laughs> Oh, 
so cold, I'm going to have to blow my nose. Even if that, as long as that engine, that head's on. <laughs> even if, we, if we have another disaster, I'm taking it home anyway. Down, <laughs> but as long as that head's on, it's coming over to me today. Oh God, you don't get much room on this one at all. No. Hmm. Well, there is need to catch a special tool after all. <laughs> no, that's not going to make any Very difference. It's the cover. Right. And this is why I left this loose, actually. Yeah, right. So... Cover off and do it. I didn't know how much the cover would interfere. So what I can do is I'll just pop them off yeah, that again. Yeah, it makes it easy, doesn't it? Heads on. She's on. Woohoo! <laughs> what I'll do now is I'll have a cup of tea them down, is it? and I'm going to talk them down. It's a special tool for them. You don't say. <laughs> yeah. Are oh, they tight all the way there, but... Yeah. yeah, it's like there's a resistance in it. There we go. Here you can just see, look, the shards of aluminium that have been sacrificed in yeah. putting that on, hence why it's a once. On use only. Just make sure you clean that away, because... You can see there's quite a bit of debris there. Yeah. And if you don't clean around that, it could damage your belt. Yeah, true. There we go. That's it. So what's next then? Belt, top timing with the belt or cover Got to tighten this one. Ah, okay, one more to do. Which I just, all I do is I'll lock, lock the gear train off to do this one. So I guess the next thing, put that casing on then, then is it? And then yeah, we'll get the clutch side casing on so that we're, we're all sealed up and then we'll do the timing. Oh, then we'll do the timing. So it's gonna, look, it's gonna look, can't wait to see that, uh, the clutch all on there actually with the red yeah. over on clutch. Oh, it's gonna look nice, it's gonna look nice. Bet me, nice my tea's cold. Yeah, they need a coffee machine out there, don't they? Mm. <laughs> have you got one, have you? Mm. <laughs> That's a coffee machine out there. Yeah, one of those Dolce <laughs> thingies. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a posh coffee machine in the house, so that's now come out here. It's right to the garage. So, like, in the next few weeks, I'm taking all this off, going to paint all this. Yeah, yeah. Big screen's going to go up oh, here so you? that I can feed the manual oh, into the big screen. Nice, it? So how, how difficult is the timing? Because everyone's sort of... When it comes to belt changes, I suppose just changing the belts is, is relatively easy, isn't it? But if you're timing yeah. it up from I think from the um, it's it's really straightforward if you know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you don't know what you're doing, just be methodical about it. And one of the things you can do, certainly on the Ducatis, is, you know, when your belt's in there, if you're just about to take it all apart, mark up a reference mark when you've got it into the timed position so you yeah. know exactly where to put it back from. And um, I've heard stories of people will count the teeth between yeah, I certain markings. Yeah, saw a couple markings. of videos of people counting so the teeth. As whatever, well. whatever makes you comfortable with doing it. But you can get for... For the two valves, you get these like locking tools. So um, on the hyper motards, uh, these are eight mil threads, and I think the pins are seven off the top of my head. They're slightly smaller on like the six nine sixes and everything like that. But these will enable you to turn the cam into the correct place and lock it into right. its into its timed position, I see. Yeah. which would then align with the bottom end yeah. timed position. Yeah. Then you just fit your belts, then take all the timing tools out to tension it. So and it's a pr pretty straightforward yeah, process. Yeah. But we're going to do that after we've got the clutch cover on. So yeah. we'll just stick that to one side for now. Because there's timing marks on that clutch cover as well, isn't yeah, there? So it's yeah, it just makes there. our life easier. But we've just got to assemble the support bearing that sits in oh, there. Yeah, that's something else we were missing, wasn't it? So where's the oil? I was thinking about this the other day when I was editing the video. Where's the oil actually fed into the crank? Here. So it's, oh, it's fed into the crank Literally, here. So your oil oh. pump will um, kick out via this pressure hole here. Right. That will come into the clutch there. cover, goes up, comes to here. Now, um, you've got a pressure sensor. Oh. So that's where your oil warning oh, light right, is fed yes. from. And then that feed, so you've got a bronze bush inside here, which is what the crank sits yeah. against. Uh, I see. And then you'll notice there that there, there's an there's a drilling that goes all the way through. And this is why you've got this, um, so we've got a bearing to put in here, a circlet, but we've also got this seal, which is inside the engine, 
Yeah. And that's so, that purpose is, is that will sit, sit over there. Right, sit over there. there. And that will fed directly and into the will, crank. Yeah, and crank out via the It will bottom support end. the um, big end bearings. Yeah. And then you've got another drill in somewhere in here that the, <laughs> the bit that we've been waiting for that will take the yeah, oil up here, the takes the oil up there. They go into um, the top of the head and then it's a drain, yeah, drain yeah, back yeah. system. So that can fully drain. This is a bit like all horizontal heads on all GKs tend to have a little pooling of oil. Okay. So it's a nightmare when you take it apart because there's always oil left yeah, over. Yes. So if I remember right, we put the bearing in here, didn't we? I hope so, because I, I don't and think it's in my bag anymore. Circle it. We definitely did have it because I remember us looking at it. We lined it all up, didn't we? Oh, that's a gear. We did have it. We did have it. No, no, you've got, we've got it. Don't worry. We know. I know <laughs> we've got worried, it. Don't get worried. <laughs> yeah, all, here all. it is. Here you it is. It here it is. I think that's the one. Oh, don't do that to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the bearing. No, it's not the bearing. Oh, okay, wind right. my neck in. We had it though. We had it. I definitely know we had it. He says confidently. But we definitely did. <laughs> Panic over, there is no bearing which goes in here. <laughs> There's just the seal. Yeah. Oof, I was getting worried then. Is that just normal silicon grease? Yeah, it? just silicon grease just helps. Doesn't do any damage to anything. And so we are that way around. <coughs> yeah, I'm dying. Right. <laughs> yeah. Don't die in the corner there. <coughs> I need oh, I need you to take home your bloody yeah, engine no. today. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a good seal positioning. So it just sort of says in there in the guidance, make sure that the ring can spin, which it can. Uh, I don't say it actually says that, does it? Yeah. So that's that now reassembled. So we've got the seal. So you've got the bush that supports yep. the outside of the crank. Then the seal that's going to provide us our seal for the oil way. Mm -hmm. Now all we've got to do is goop this yeah. to drop that on there. Bang it on. What I always tend to do with the, these ones where they've got a su support like that when you're putting the cover on yeah, is but put a bit of grease in just to hold it in place. In case it doesn't move as you just... The last thing in the world you want to have happen is that drop out as you put the cover on and you Absolutely. don't know about it. Seal. Bit, bit of grease into the seal. And unlike modern Ducatis, these come with a dry clutch as standard. You haven't got to pay extra three grand for yeah. the casing, which gives you a dry clutch. Panigales, eh? Yeah. Technology moves on, but goes backwards at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, there's pros and cons for wet and dry clutches. Get some in there, that first start. Not yeah. bone dry when it first turns over for you. So we're gooping. Right, our seal's in place, so we're good yep. from that front. And then we've just got to make sure that that seal goes in. It's a brand new seal as well, so it's a yeah. little bit. There we go, I think that's it. No, that's just caught on the edge there. There we go. Oh, I get old. It's even push against a bit more. And I've just got to line it, there we go. Should just it. push on, I shouldn't have to force it. Yeah. There we go. Right, just Oof. clean up the Don't mess the seal up around there. Nice seals nice and in. Almost completed. There we go. We're in. Being an aluminium case, if you've got standard friction plates, they'll be steel. Right, they'll yeah, really yeah, hurt this. You can yeah. get aluminium oh, can you? friction plates. Oh, okay. 
which I used to use for racing. They're a lot more expensive, but they're better for these. Yeah. Better for these, you see. So a bit of thread lock on these. Yeah. One locks the bolt in, but two also provides a bit of an oil seal through the yeah. primary gear. It's almost as if, if you edit the video together, we did this all in the same day. <laughs> I've even worn the same clothes for I know, continuity reasons. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> I've different caps and hoodies and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Or like... I've never left the garage in between filming. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> i tell you what, it's a long time since I've put a standard clutch together. Is it? I've got <laughs> yeah. slipper clutches. Yeah, everything I do is slipper clutches. Yeah, I'm, I may upgrade to a slipper clutch at some point. If you like playing on the bike and like, you know, mess, messing around at high revs and yeah. slamming down gears and that, you, you need a slip it. Yeah, I've, I've noticed, the, I've only ridden really this bike three times, which is ridiculous. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, I've said, barely, yeah. barely ridden the bloody thing. But I've noticed that, that's it, if, you, if you're doing that, it locks back up really easily. Does. Well, it's a big, really easy. you've seen the size of yeah, the pistons, yeah, you know, exactly. there's, a, there's a massive amount going on there. Yeah. When you slam the... Especially I want to, want to do a few little track days on it and stuff like that as well, yeah. you know, so probably, probably going to be... Well, you'll have to let us know when you do a track day. I'll rock up and... Oh, uh, right, then. yeah, that'd be super. I'll have a play on something else at the same time. Yeah, if I yeah, can. yeah. Well, you burn yourself a go on it, mate. You burn yourself a go on it. 186 Newton metres on this one. <clears throat> It's looking sexy. Shiny. Shiny, shiny, bling bling. Blingy bling bling. God, butterfingers. <laughs> Getting excited about three years worth of work culminating shortly. <laughs> I know. Need some sort of drum roll. Some sort of, you know, <laughs> fireworks, party poppers, something. <laughs> <laughs> Going to draw our pensions now and finish this one. <laughs> <laughs> All the extra space you're going to have, that's my engine in your garage. And then the piercing resistance. Look at that. Oh, we did have correct bolts for this. I've been three years waiting to fit this. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Obra, I'm very patient. Yeah. <laughs> Should have bought me uh, carbon belt covers as well, shouldn't I? Just to oh, get it all looking sweet. Stop showing off. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, look at that. Too much Ducati porn going I know, on. Here. Isn't there? I know, have to admit it's an 18 plus this video, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Another little bit of bling. So. Over on clutch slave. I don't know, it's like there's a spacer on here. I think you don't need to use the. No, it doesn't. It goes right up against the case. So that's quite nice. That's built in with the um, anti-rotation device. Oh, right, it's built into the, the actual... Yeah. yeah. So there's a little spacer thing normally for that, isn't it? Yeah, little so like that. Machined so into the standard it. one would be... Yeah, you'd would stick be that on to put it into a standard Ducati yeah. one. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Right, did that. Good. Yeah, it's looking good, it's looking good. So we've got a set of cams in here that are at the standard positions in terms of time, but you'll notice there's a cut out here. Yep. That will align with this. And what happens is when you put this timing locking tool in, it comes uh, out through goes, the cover, yeah, and that will hold my cam in the right place to be able to put the belts right. on. Yeah. So that's kind of handy so you don't need to worry about timing marks with these tools so we'll just stick that back on that locks that off so that's that that's the vertical locked in its timing position sorry there and timing wise we just got to line up our little dot oh yeah with the front case so that's a little cut out there little dot there that's in the correct place. Pulling up on the belt to get it into the correct 
position. Walk it on. So we should be good there. I've got that right back. Yeah. What I'm just going to do now, I'm not going to fully tension the belts, but I'm going to put myself in a place of a bit of tension. Yeah. Just lock that down. Pull that down. Same up yeah. here. Bit tight on this one, let's just loosen it off a bit. That moves that, that moves okay. it, okay. Yeah. Just put a bit of tension on. And just mark that in for now. And all I'm gonna do now is remove the can lock locks, in, yeah. Can lock pins. Which a bit tight, so I got a bit of tension on there. Check if it actually turns over now. <laughs> now we just got to spin it over a few times. That turns over, mate. Feel alright? As yeah. it should? Feels good. No graunching or knocking or. <laughs> Clunk. Clunk. There goes the valve. <laughs> Clunk. So I'm just doing that to balance the yeah. tension in the belt. What we'll do now. Beautiful. We Slide. will come into horizontal top dead centre, which the mark is kindly provided yeah. for yeah. us. And we will now tension that belt. It's like it. So we're gonna apply tension to that belt. So I need to get my uh, tension machine. Oh, do you have a special machine or do you yeah. do it for oh, you you uh -oh. I do it by frequency. So we're going to use a clavis belt okay. tension meter just to measure the tension on the belts. So you take it in two different places bizarrely. On the horizontal it's done here. Okay. So if you think about that, that's against the mobile tensioner. Yeah. But on the vertical you do it here. Yeah. Which is on the fixed tensioner. You measure your tension when you're in top dead center for the respective cylinder. So we will do the tension for the horizontal when yeah. we're in horizontal top dead center. We'll then move this about, I think it's about 90 degrees. You get to about 270 and it will be a vertical top dead center and then we'll do the belt tension yeah. there. Okay. So this is a clavis meter. It's a clean. So it just measures the twang effect. That's my reference piece, 250. So basically, all you do is you stick it up against there. You hit it with something. Usually you can do it with your hand. It's not wanting to play. One sixty-five. It's tight. Right, so the start in think for new belts is on the two valves is 144. 140 plus or minus from cold. So we are slightly out. On 37, so we are there. Okay. That's 140 plus or minus five. And if I'm just gonna nip this up for now, because what we're got to do is spin the engine over and yeah. check it sticks so I'll just tighten that one there let's try and find where it's just stuck there it's roughly the top dead center it's, so you see you move it about yeah 90 ish odd degrees we'll just pass 90 on it then we need to do is take the bent tensioner here Ooh, 185. Right. <clears throat> too tight now, then. Might have gone a bit too far. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right, slightly out. 131. Can I just force that down a little bit when it tightens? Oh, there we go. There we go. It's probably too much, that. Yeah. 
Do that there, 173. And can we just... So next to nothing makes such a big yeah. variance in it. Ah, there we go. It's that. 140. Right, 142. 142. So, I'm going to try and lock down there. So, do you recommend always using one of those machines to do it then? Because a lot of people just do it by feel, I suppose. You can do it by feel. You can do it. There's, there's this, I think there's like a deflection tool that measures, like you, you apply some oh, right, yeah. force, force to it, which it moves. And that works. I suppose it's whatever you've got to hand. This is more repeatable. Yeah. Right, so let's just spin this over. So now what we're gonna do, spin it over a few times. Let the bet belts settle. And we'll just do a check. Yeah, after it's moved, yeah. 137, so we'll bob on. Repeat, please. One thirty-two. That's good. And then I throw my tool down there. I really should have brought some party poppers or something. <laughs> I, I didn't think ahead, did I? I did the firework party poppers. Everything. That's why you've got your build oil in it. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Good. Swing so nicely. No knocks. Oh, there we go. One built engine. Ta -da. <laughs> Took three years. Three years in there. the making. Yeah. Three years in the making, literally. As I say wow. to my wife when she reminds me about things, says, I'll get round to it eventually. You don't <laughs> yeah. have to keep reminding me every six months. <laughs> <laughs> we got there, mate. We yeah. got there. Oh, well, thanks, mate. Your, your efforts are above and beyond on this one, haven't you? Above and beyond the call of duty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is appreciated. There it is. Time to get it home. We're there. Finally. After three years of blood, sweat, tears, multiple orders, <laughs> fettling, there's a Hyper Motard 1100S engine. Back together. Back together. Don't forget all the money and all the hassle yeah. and the aggro <laughs> and the miles driving up here four times. But finally it's done. So um, that's finally back together. Um, Lamb Chops is going to take it away. It, we've finally. done all the belt tensions and that that you've seen in the video. Um, I've just advised him that when he gets it back in the bike, first thing he needs to do, power turnover with the plugs out. Just get the oil going through the circuit before you do that first... Um, powered start gonna use some cheap shitty oil to initially flush the engine through drop that out then put some semi synthetic in run that for the first 600 miles because remember this engine's pretty much new other than other than the sort of main core components yeah yeah it is yeah you've rehoned barrels new piston rings, rings new bearings yeah. new big end bearings so 600 mile running, drop the oil again, then you can go to fully synthetic as, you know, sort of yeah. per normal use for Ducatis. So, hope you enjoyed that rather protracted build. Um, longest one ever. Some sort of record. It's, it's yeah. called Norris Whitewater. I mean, it must be something in the Guinness Book of Record for the We've got, got to be build. three years going on been. that engine, it's you know, been. so. Um, well, if, in another three it. years' time, I hopefully see the bike back together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be finished quicker than that. It's going to be finished quicker than that. But yeah, on the road for the spring. On yeah. the road for the spring. And hopefully, um, if you do a track day on it, give us yeah, an invite. Yeah, we'll give a shout. Come on. Yeah, but it's really appreciated your efforts yeah. on this one. You've got above and beyond. But So, results, hope you enjoyed that really video. Good. If you did, give us a like and uh, leave any comments, questions down below. See you in the next video. Cheers, then. Cheers, guys.